Hello and welcome to the Views Club. If you want to learn how to make ground beef empanadas, please keep watching. The ingredients we're going to need for our ground beef empanadas are going to be ground beef, one chopped potato, one tomato, one white onion, one poblano, green pepper, it's the one that has the darker green, some chopped cilantro, and this is optional because I know a lot of you guys don't like it. We're going to need some maseca, which I have in here. If you guys don't have maseca and you guys are able to get fresh masa, when you ask for the masa, let them know that it's going to be for tortillas. So you can use fresh masa or you can use maseca. We're going to need about half a can of tomato sauce, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, a pinch of turmeric. You guys know that I add this to a lot of my dishes. If you don't have it, you can do without. Half a teaspoon of salt, one egg, one clove of garlic. If you are a garlic lover, my little vampires out there, <laughs> quite the opposite, right? <laughs> Um, you guys can add more garlic if you're interested. Some Mexican oregano. This is going to be optional. I have one teaspoon of cornstarch and one tablespoon of water. So let's begin making these delicious empanadas. I want you to pick your pan, the one that you adore the most, because these empanadas are going to taste better if you're happy and you're enjoying your process. So to our pan, we have it on a medium heat and we're going to be adding some oil. That's about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of oil. I'm going to add my garlic. Okay, so start breaking apart your ground beef. You guys already know how that goes. I'm going to be here about a minute or two, breaking it down. And this is where it's going to be up to you guys and whatever you feel comfortable. For me, you guys know that I adore uh, chicken bouillon. So I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of chicken bouillon to this blend, but if you guys prefer salt, you can add, um, you can start off with about half a teaspoon and then gradually add the salt to your liking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to just break this down for another minute or so and I'm going to keep this on a medium heat. I'm going to put a lid on it and I'm going to let this cook for about seven minutes. You're good between seven to eight minutes and I'll see you guys then. Okay, I've been here for about seven minutes and the seven minutes are pretty exact to when your meat is going to change a different color. So as soon as your meat looks cooked and the pink goes away, that's when you want to go ahead and add your potatoes. Okay, so I'm going to put my lid on here and I'm going to let this cook for about three minutes and I'll see you guys then. Okay, friends, so that's been about three minutes. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to add our seasoning. So here goes our garlic, onion powder, turmeric, and this is going to be optional. I love cooking with cumin. Cumin is good for you. It promotes digestion and it's rich in iron. Um, but a lot of people don't like the smell or if you're allergic, keep it out. And that's why I kept it over here. But if you guys are interested, cumin is going to bring this dish together so well. I added one teaspoon of cumin. Okay. And once you've mixed it around with all your, um, your spices, then you want to go ahead and add your veggies. Give it a good mix and we're going to leave this sauteing with the beef, combining all the flavors and uh, spices together and we're going to cook it for another four minutes. The best part of this meat is that if you make too much, because you'll see the empanada filling doesn't handle that much of the filling inside, 
depends on what size you make them. You can freeze the other half or you can eat the rest over rice and it's just amazing. A burrito and you're set. So I'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to be adding half a can of 8 ounces, so about 4 ounces of tomato sauce. And you want to add 1 cup of water. I still have all of this at a medium heat. Give it a good stir. So once you've added your tomato sauce and your water, give it a good stir and you're going to continue to cook this for another four minutes. So you'll be good between four to six minutes and I'll see you guys then. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to be adding cornstarch to this blend. If you don't have cornstarch at home, you can still make your empanadas with this filling, but I like mine to be thicker because when you're rolling your empanadas, and I'll show you guys when, you have less of the juice that drips out because we want it to be nice and juicy and flavorful and we don't want our juice to spill out. So this is the reason why I'm going to be adding some cornstarch. So you get your cornstarch, your water. You can use anywhere from one tablespoon to two of water and it's regular temp water. I have it on a medium low setting just so you guys can hear me better but at home keep it on a medium heat. Pour it in. Give it a good stir. And you're going to see that it's going to thicken up on its own. Okay, once you've stirred everything together and it's combined well, you want to cook this for another four minutes. That's about how much time my potato needs. It depends on what size you cut your potatoes, on how long you're going to cook it for this next part. So just keep an eye on your potatoes, get a fork, poke it, and when they're soft and goes through smoothly, then you're ready to turn this off. Alright guys, I'm at about 4 minutes, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add all of my cilantro. If you guys don't like cilantro, you can use green onion. If you don't like onion, you can keep it out. Skip the step, guys. Ooh, once you add the cilantro, smell that. It adds some freshness to this blend and it's just perfect. Once you've turned your burner off, you want to go ahead and add your oregano. Ooh. This combination is making me weak in the knees, guys. <laughs> All right, we have all the ingredients. We have everything set here. Now it's time for us to go and assemble our empanadas. Who's excited to make these tortillas? They're kind of like tortillas for the empanadas, for real. It's not that difficult. If you guys master those corn tortillas I taught you, this is gonna be a cinch. Before I get started, I wanted to share with you guys my absolute favorite snack right now. I've been such a good girl and indulging in these little tea cakes. Let me go ahead and open it on the inside so you guys can kind of see what to expect from it. They are so worth it. Okay, they look a little bit like this and they're, they're just so delicate and lovely. Reminds me of opening up tamal, you know, you get a little gift. Oh, this one's a little cracked. But it has like marshmallow something filling. I don't know if you guys can see it there. And then this bottom part, let me bite it so you can see. It has like a cookie. Isn't that wonderful? If you guys are interested, I purchased them at World Market. But if I find a link for them, I'll link it in my description area for you guys with the name as well. Okay, let me go rinse my hands real quick. Okay friends, so let me show, I found these eggs and 
you know, I'm a sucker for a good package. And this one just said, hey, I'm from a small farm. Pick me up. <laughs> and I thought the packaging was so pretty because I usually end up purchasing my eggs uh, from Costco. So these are the eggs I'm going to be using today. It's called Happy Egg. Isn't that beautiful? Hopefully I can figure out my egg situation and my butter situation for us. But go ahead and crack one egg. Large or small, you're going to be okay with this recipe. Your salt. And I'm going to spice it up today. I added one tablespoon of garlic powder and one tablespoon of onion powder. And you can blend uh, your seasoning for your masa with whatever you like. I have some very, very hot water here. So we're going to, I'm going to start off with like about a cup and a half of water, of warm water. Mine's really hot, but I want you guys to be careful. And then just go from there. I know we all have comfort food and the smell of this masa just gives me so many good memories. So it seems that today with that juicy egg that I used, I only used um, a cup and three fourths of water. Okay, let me get my tortilla uh, press and clear us out so that we can start assembling these empanadas. So you want to take some of your masa. To a little ball. Press it down just a little bit. If you guys are interested in more details on how to make these tortillas with maseca, I have a video and I give you a lot more tips. My tortilla press is not leveled properly. I'll be on a prowl for a new one here soon. Okay, so that's, that's what we have. You want to be careful when you're filling your empanadas. Because depending on how you chop your potato, you might have some problems. So I made sure to give myself plenty of problems so that you guys can learn from them. And I'll be showing you guys my mistake at the end of this video if you're interested. So now to fold it, I usually help myself with the plastic itself. And you want to fill it with about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. And I made my masa super soft, so I need to patch this one up. Just grab another piece. Press it down nicely. You have two choices on what you can do here. You can either press it down with your fingers, or you can give it a nice little design with a fork. Hope you guys can see it. And let's continue to make some more. And for the empanadas, I'm making the little ball a little bit thicker and bigger than I would for the tortillas. When you're doing it at home, you're gonna be like, oh, now I know why. Give it a quick press right there. Come all around and press it down. Okay. 
I know the Puerto Rican empanadas are made with pastry puff and oh my goodness, they're so good. I remember growing up and I would tell my mom, how come we don't, how come our dough is different? And she'd be like, because we're Mexican. <laughs> Make sure that when you tilt it over like this, you pull it gently so that way you don't mess up your empanada. There we go. As far as portions for this quantity, it's gonna depend on you guys because I know I use some and I make them smaller for my babies and some are larger for the adult. So it's gonna be up to you on how you wanna um, disperse this amount of masa that you made. And if not, you saw how easy it is. You run out, you can make them real, real quick. If you're new with using this type of uh, masa, I suggest that you guys start slowly with the water And the more you use it, the better you become familiar with it and it's, it gets very easy for you. I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, but I have it, I'm laying my empanadas on a board with a little bit of the maseca flour on the bottom so that they don't stick to wherever I have them while I'm making the rest of them. And when I make empanadas, I'm always comadreando, which means chit-chatting with my sister, with my mom. So I'm gonna chit chat with you guys. I am currently super excited for a program on Netflix called The OA. It's a second season coming out. You gotta patch it up. You'll see that when I fry it, nobody's going to notice the difference. Okay, friends, my oil is hot. I've been frying it up, but if you haven't fried before, get a chopstick, a wooden spoon. If it bubbles on the outsides, you're ready to fry. I went ahead and made some empanadas. I had to make... I've already made some empanadas. I had to make two batches of my masa to feed my, my troops. So this is where I want you guys to be very, very careful when you're dropping your empanada, okay? So you're going to drop it and you're going to push it out. Be very careful. it out and you don't want to overcrowd your your frying pan or whatever you're frying in because the more you add in here the higher levels the higher the levels of the oil will go so I usually keep mine at about three of them but just take it easy I'm not trying to fry my finger today guys drop it out Ah, oh, some of you got scared on that one. <laughs> if you notice that your uh, oil has too much steam when you first put them on, that's okay. But when you get that smoke from it being too hot, just lower your temperature. And you're going to end up frying them for about two and a half minutes on each side. You want to make sure that you sealed your empanada as well because if you didn't see, seal them properly or you didn't fix, fix a flat on your empanadas, then you're going to get some of that juice spill out on your oil and you're going to get popping everywhere. And the only popping you need to be doing is on that dance floor. Woo! <laughs> what does Dirty Dancing say? God didn't give you more. God would have given you maracas if he didn't want you to shake them. Woo! <laughs>
That goes for the men too. And what do I mean? You guys already know my baby. Like he'll do a nice little shimmy and he has like this, he calls it the sexy shoulder move. I hope I can get him to do it one of these days. You guys would laugh, laugh, laugh. I might have posted it on IG before. I post most of my shenanigans in the story. And if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, you should. It's views on the road. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip mine. Guys, I'm going to be adding uh, empanada style monthly. And there's going to be different versions. Empanadas are just like tacos and burritos. You can make them so many different ways. It's all about your combination of your seasonings and your proteins. That's really going to change it up and add that new dynamic to each time you make your empanadas. And I hope to share all the additions that I have for you guys. Okay, these are ready to come out. Okay, let me plate this up and I'll talk to you guys in just a moment. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited, I'm hungry. Let's dig in. I really need sour cream, but I'm out, and it's like, it's that week where things start running out in your house, so I'm gonna have to hit, hit up the grocery store here soon. Mmm. Oh yeah. You can pair it with whatever kind of salsa you like, but. I have some beans and I have my special blend of cilantro rice. Mm. Mm, that's so good. Let me show you the filling. You guys already know I can eat. No joke. These chiles are delicious and there's a recipe for you. There's a recipe for the beans if you guys are interested. It's going to be at the end of the video. Okay guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please take the time to subscribe. I'm still trying to get to 100k subscribers because I'm trying to show off for my kids. You want to keep me a cool mom? <laughs> I need you guys to subscribe. Um, if you guys haven't clicked that bell for notifications, you should because a lot of the feeds are getting really weird. I might not be coming out, but you need to click that bell in order to get notifications and to become one of my bells. And if you're not following me on Twitter and Instagram, you should. It's Views on the Road. I share what you guys share with me and it it's actually been keeping me so happy. Like the Views Club has been keeping my energies like going, like I have a purpose, I'm excited. And I think each video keeps getting better, right? I gotta bring it. <laughs> As I mentioned to you guys in the video, I do have a variety of uh, recipes for the empanadas. So depending on how this one does, I'll bring them in. I'm gonna say at least once a month because there is just so much variety for a delicious empanada. So on that note, thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, adios. If you guys are a little bit more curious about the masa and you have a difficult time with it, um, I have a video for the tortillas that gives you more details and helpful hints. So for these, I made my dough a little bit more wet, so I usually dip my finger to make these, and today I don't need to because it's damp enough and the masa is just perfect, so. Just a little ball. And with these, you don't wanna make them too, too thin or too thick, they have to be just right. You guys a little bit of a look right there you guys always ask me about how many inches 
that's about the thickness and the thickness you're seeing is exactly what I have going on over here. There's no illusion with this camera today. <laughs> okay, so these are about a good size for me. You're gonna put, that's about one, one tablespoon. I think you're good with about two, okay? So you're gonna use your plastic to help you push it over. You gotta be really careful with these. See, that one I could have afforded to make it a little bit bigger. So that way we didn't have this kind of spillage. But the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is that if you make them too thin, you're gonna get your potatoes to push out. So you can either just do that or get a little bit more masa and press it down. And that'll just be a special one. So this is how I'm used to seeing our empanadas. You press the outsides with a fork. And that is how you mess up an empanada. Now let me show you how to make it right. I think that's one of the things that you guys enjoy the channel, that I keep all these delicious mistakes. I mean, the food's gonna look messed up. It's still gonna taste good, but when you wanna present to your family and kinda show off, that's not what you wanna do.